So now that he's got this centered up good, he's going to take his drill. We've got it marked to 350 thousandths. This is quite a bit of time. This whole bottom side of this is undercoated. I think it's going to work really good. Well, the plan was to be working on the blue truck here today, um, but the rain's rolled in. That's one of the disadvantages of trying to work outside. You're kind of limited by the weather itself. But Dad had a carburetor come in. He's doing some work to it, and I thought it might be a really good chance to kind of show you uh, show you a fix on a carburetor like this. Something that we haven't. I don't know if he's ever done before. Um, kind of an interesting deal. So let's go over here to the mill and see what he's into and what we're going to work on today. So dad already has the carburetor took apart and he's got the body mounted up here in the mill. But basically what's going on here is that the actual, the threads here where the squirter mounts to the body of the carburetor have gotten stripped out. Uh, so you can see there compared to these here, those threads there go all the way to the, let's see if I can get us to focus here, those threads there go all the way to the top of the hole where over here, not as much. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a helical to it. Uh, these were a bit of a pain to find from what I understand from what dad was saying uh, I wasn't here when he was looking for them but he found this thread repair kit it's for uh, what's the thread dad? 1228 size yeah national fine uh, 1228 took a little while to find that um, but what he's gonna do now is he's gonna take and get a, a good center location with the mill he's gonna use that drill bit to make sure he's got exact center of that hole He's going to drill that, those threads out and he'll be able to tap a new set of threads and then thread the helical down into it. Again, not something we've ever had to do before, um, but when this came in he was just going through it, make sure everything was good with it and realized that those threads were killed on this thing. So now that he's got this centered up good, he's going to take his drill. We've got it marked to 350 thousandths. This is the helical's 250 thousandths and he can drill this out. So you can see now that's been drilled out so we're ready to tap the new hole now so you got the tap started while it was still in the uh, in the collet here in the chuck I mean sorry uh, got that started so it was started good and square and I can finish it off by hand with the tap handle And there are the new threads where the helical will thread into. And the kit comes with this insert tool, so you can take that and use it to thread thread the helical down into your new threads. So anyone that's ever used a helical before, you know that when you insert them, you use the tool, and it has this little hold on a second. It has this tail here. Uh, on it that you can use that is what's used to thread it down in place you got to break that off uh, we did break it off in there and use some air to get it out we were successful it is out we know it's gone I'm gonna go through this away to make sure it doesn't get in any of the rest of this stuff So another thing that dad had to do whenever he, uh, because of the way these work, and now that that has been uh, he the cold, he had to find some other stuff. I'm going to let him tell you about these and how they work. When you put the helical, you can see it earlier in the video, there's two slots on each side internal on that hole right here. On a, on a low flow, this is, a, this is just a reduced shank screw. And it's got a slot on each side that the fuel for the accelerator pump discharge nozzle goes by this reduced shank screw. Well, when you put the helical in, you can see it does away with those slots. Well, the way you get by with that, these, these are high flow. Uh, they're, these screws are used normally with a 50cc accelerator pump, but they're hollow. 
in the center and they've got a hole through on each side. So you no longer have to have the slots on each side uh, of, the, uh, of the body. You don't have to have a reduced shank screw. This takes care of that. So when you do this, when you fix this, you have to replace this with this. Gotcha. And that pretty much, you can put the same squirter. These will flow much more than accelerator pump squirter is. Uh, this this accelerator pump squirter is a 21, which is a very, very small, actually it's 25. Uh, it's actually a, a very small accelerator pump squirter. But uh, this will flow much more than that, but that won't cause any problems because uh, uh, you'll just have a more of a fuel supply. It won't affect how much, what I'm saying is it won't affect how much fuel comes out of the, of the discharge nozzle. Gotcha. Cool. So it's just a little asterisk on whenever you hear the cool these things, kind of something else you need for it to keep working. So now Dad is at the point he's testing the power valves in this carburetor and he, like, he wants to check and make sure they're not busted or anything. So talk us through that. Uh, it's just a, this is just a Moroso power valve tester. You can visually see the power valve opening and closing when you apply a vacuum to this little fixture. It's pretty neat. I do this on these carburetors every time we get them apart. <clears throat> Rusted power valve can cause you some real ill acting, ill acting stuff. So you can just these is a, these are uh, you can tell exactly where they open and where they close. Uh, if they're broke, they won't maintain. So you can go put this up to about five inches of vacuum and watch the watch the movement on the end of the power valve. And if it's broke, it will do this, but not harder this quick. I can make it, you'll see it open, mm. and then the vacuum keeps it shut. So, those are, seem to be fine. And they seem to be shut in the back where they need to, so. Cool. One's good, but let's do both of them. And And there is the finished product, all put back together and ready to go. Just kind of a little something can we get into sometimes. I thought it was a little interesting, something we hadn't really, actually that's, that helical is the first time we've ever done that, or using those new screws uh, to go into those uh, squirters. So it's pretty interesting for us, thought it might be good for you guys, especially since it's raining and there's nothing we can do to the blue truck. So hopefully when we get back the next time you see us here in just a second, We'll be working on the blue truck. All right, it has finally dried up enough to actually do a little work on this thing. It is cool up here, man. It just went straight from like summer straight to winter up here. It's, it's kind of ridiculous to be honest with you. Um, but we're back working on this thing out here. Uh, we've been working on it a little bit already and I'll kind of show you what we've got into so far, which was the main thing is the biggest thing to kind of get started on this now that we're at this point is getting these cross seals put back in place, which we shouldn't have cut but we did so anyway so we cut those we've got to get these cross braces these two that run the full length of the bed and to get those back in so then we can set the bed back on the truck and figure out where the two in the center that don't go all the way across they just kind of go to basically to the outside of this opening just a little bit we've got to figure out where those sit one of those is very important because there's a set of bolts that goes through it to bolt it to the frame. The other one, not as important. It is just support, but it needs to sit in the right place on the frame so it doesn't jack the bed up or anything. So I took it went around the perimeter of this, kind of cleaned it out. Dad's uh, cut this section out to get him some access into, the, uh, into these cross seals that are already here so that we can weld these cross seals in, or this one and then that one, get those welded in, and when that happens, that's going to open us up to be able to kind of uh, get it, the bed set on the truck and kind of get that figured out. The other thing we'll probably do before we take this thing off the trailer is get the sheet metal in place and at least tacked in place to give this a little bit of structure because even this old bed that had the floor still in it was just like a spring whenever you tried to pick it up. So this thing would be really bad with no floor in it at all. So we're going to do that, 
kind of figure out where those uh so the good thing is we can once we get these two welds in place we know where the other two cross seals go we'll set those on the bed and just bolt them in place and then figure out a way to either just tack them easily you know kind of tack them in place onto the sheet metal and then we'll pull the bed back off again and do all the final welds for the whole floor and all the cross seals all at the same time this is a lot of work me and dad talked about it really. man if we'd realized kind of what all this is going to take we probably wouldn't have done this but here we are we're trying to save it we're trying to keep using it and trying not to spend a bunch of money on another truck um it won't be a ton of money in this there'll be some but not nowhere near the price of a truck right nowhere near in this six to ten thousand dollars depending on what you're looking for out there so that's the plan he's in here straightening up the cross seals they got a little bent and stuff so he's going to straighten those out and then we'll start getting these welded in place So we got everything ground all the way around the whole perimeter. When we were cutting this out, we did not realize that the structure was here and we kind of cut through it. So the first thing Dad's going to do is weld this back up so it's kind of ready to go. Then we'll weld the cross seals in, the front two, the front one and the back one, and lay the sheet metal in here and get it welded in place and then we're ready to stick this thing onto the bed of the truck. We do have this back cross seal in place now. We did space it up so that the, since this floor is gonna be sitting kinda on the edge of this, it's gonna be raised up instead of having the, the, the divots, the lower spots in it. So we did raise this up. We just took a piece of uh, square stock, laid over this, and then pulled that up to it. So you can see the, you can see the spacing there now. Dad's filling up some of the places we cut a little too much off of, and then the next thing we'll do, I'm gonna do just a little bit more grinding around here, and then we're gonna be ready to lay the bed floor on here, the metal, and get it welded in place. So here you can get an idea of what we did. Huh? Have that piece of square stock left over it, laid over it at an angle, clamped, and then laid over the bed floor so that that cross seal is raised up where it needs to be. So I got the piece of steel laid in place here. Kind of covers up everything. Makes you feel a little better about the whole situation. <laughs> it is in, but to be fair, it is right here uh, roughly is where that cross seal is. And it is very sturdy there and then over there. So once we get this thing, the plan is we should have got this cut a little shorter. We measured from the headboard directly all the way to the very back which was 98 inches uh, but we need a little gap so that he could weld to the floor and not have to weld to the headboard so we've backed this up so we've got about a half inch gap or so uh, across the whole back that's going to tack that in place up there a few places down the length on each side then we're just going to take a sawzall cut that off and then he's got a nice place where he can corner weld this right across the back of the bed we've already ground that off and everything so it should be uh, okay so that's a big chunk of this. Just getting this piece in place is gonna be a big deal. So we'll get that tacked in right now. It is on there. We've got it set up in place. No bolts or anything in it yet. The cross seals aren't welded. The two center ones aren't welded in yet. But we at least have it on and roughly in place where it needs to be. So that's going to kind of work okay. These, uh, I don't know. I'll try and show it. You can see that cross seal is resting on the metal there. So 
that did what we wanted it to do. So we should be able to, once we tack these in place, we should be able to um, pull this back out off, stand it up, and then weld it up how it needs to be. But in general, like I said, it's doing kind of what, what we wanted it to do. So if we can get those two cross seals tacked in place where they need to be, uh, the two center ones, then we can pull this thing back off probably gonna call it quits for today once we get that done to be honest with you and then just the only thing we'll have left is tacking the uh, spot weld and the braces in back in place and then drilling some holes through the metal and bolting it down and then it'll be done so really this ended up there's quite a bit of work right here but really didn't take as much time as we kind of thought it would all right we got the bed pulled back off of this thing I didn't figure you guys want to see that again we got it pulled off and we got it set up here and so the last kind of second to last step is we got this thing set up. We're gonna go here, and Dad's gonna come in here, and you can see where we uh, where he spot welded these middle cross seals in place yesterday. <laughs> yeah, we had the gas off. Sorry, that was my fault. Um, but he spot welded those in, so now he can go in spot weld these all the way across. He's gonna weld these braces back together also. And that will have him finished welding up these uh, cross seals that we had to weld back in place. And that's going to have this all together. And then the only thing we have left to do is drill the holes uh, through the floor in a couple places. Uh, these two, these two, and then those two right there. So six bolts hold this thing in place. Yeah, so now he can start welding on this. And I'm going to go get us some undercoating so that we can... Uh, get this thing undercoated and ready to go. Got the undercoating back uh, while I was heat while I was gone. Dad sprayed some of this. It's called Carwell, and it's kind of a rust preventative. He's got this air pressurized spray gun. He's putting a few coats of it just all over this just to try and kind of help continue to protect what little is left for as long as he can. Uh, the other thing that I did was I got the, uh, the six holes in the bed drilled and they're all ready to go. We'll be ready to just drop some bolts in there. Had to come through the back side and just used a big drill and kind of come through here and use the drill to guide it. Seems to be okay, so I did that on all six of those, got that good. Then, like I said, I went and got some of this Rust-Oleum undercoating, and now I'm going to, it's like a rubberized spray-on stuff. Now I'm gonna go ahead, you can see I've already started on it a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and cover all of this with this undercoating. Four and a half cans later, and quite a bit of time, this whole bottom side of this is undercoated. I think it's going to work really good. It is like a rubber, I mean like I said earlier, it is kind of like a rubberized. It's a little hard to see on the camera, but it does have kind of a thickness to it. It wasn't just, just paint, and you can really see it there on these supports here. It's got a kind of a textured feel into it. It says this stuff is... Um, dry to the touch in 30 minutes and it fully cures in 24 hours so i'm going to be gone tomorrow and because of that we are going to let this set for a little while and then the plan is to get it set back down and then set back onto the bed because i can help dad do that and he can get it bolted down without me or whatever we end up having to do tomorrow so that's the big plan is to get this thing dried back down on the ground bag picked up with the engine hoist and set back on the truck and should be the last time should just be able to just bolt this bad boy down so the next time you see this the truck should be in one piece all right we got this bad boy on it is bolted down we got to get a couple more bolts uh we found out a couple of them aren't hardly as long a couple of them are too short actually or too long and one of them is uh we don't have one that's long enough so you can see everything bolted down our uh, getting the holes uh, lined to be lined up were, was honestly not bad at all. 
Uh, everything is just kind of really good on it to be honest. This was a lot of work to kind of get to this result, but like I said, this should get us through maybe another couple years with this truck and we can kind of, as long as we kind of use it just for farm use and everything like that, should be fine. I thought we were done with the blue truck, but we had a couple things that we needed to show you that got done. Uh, once we got, I told you guys when we got this bed done, we were going to take and put a spray bed liner in it. Dad took it over to Slim Jim McDowell's over in Yancey County, um, Slim Jim's body shop. And he sprayed in a bed liner in this thing, and it looks so, so good. So good, in fact, that Dad just told me that he's worried to put stuff in the bed of it because he doesn't want to scratch it up. So that's how nice it looks. But let me show you here real quick what a good job he did on this. I mean, man, it, it is by far the best looking <laughs> part of the whole truck, and it really made, made our work uh, with the bed panel in there look even better. Uh, and this stuff is like a, I don't know if it's a Rhino Liner brand. I don't know exactly what. It's not. It's not. Okay. I didn't know exactly what brand that he used on this. Uh, but this, he sprayed a bed liner in a truck that I had when I was in high school. And it was the same material. It's a textured material. It looks really good. And I think that with that on here, this bed's going to last as long or longer than we'll ever have it probably. So between the undercoating on the bottom side, this bed liner in here, this is really super solid and it should last for a really long time. It looks really great. And he did an awesome, awesome job on it. And the other thing that we're gonna be doing or that we're gonna do real quick is I ordered a muffler, just a thrush turbo muffler off of Amazon for this thing, three inch inlet and outlet. And let me show you the exhaust that was on it. Uh, much like the rest of the truck, it was pretty terrible. Um, so let me show you this. This was the exhaust in it. Uh, Dad has already taken the saws on and cut all this out. This, I guess, is like a catalytic converter on this side. This is the muffler itself. It is rotten, terrible. It was just about to fall off the truck, honestly. All the hangers and stuff were pretty rough. Uh, so Dad got this hacked off and he just put a just stuck the muffler on it and drove it yesterday and he said that even that alone made an absolutely massive difference it's picked up fuel mileage it has um it's picked up fuel mileage it has uh runs better how much did you say it picked up over the top of the hill over there mile, oh mile an hour picked up eight miles an hour eight miles an hour going over the hill here by the house so there's the muffler that we got for it like i said just a I think it was $45 muffler, thrush, three inch inlet, three inch outlet. Between the new fuel tank, the new um, exhaust system and everything, this thing is really picked up. Turns out if you're not spilling a bunch of gas and you can actually, the engine can actually breathe, it makes a big, big difference in performance. I know that's surprising for everybody. But anyway, we're gonna get under here and we're gonna extend this out and see if we can make this thing just a little bit more better <laughs> than it has been. So we kind of figured out placement that we're going to do, what we're going to use. We didn't have a union to union the um, the existing exhaust to union it into these pipes that we have. Uh, they were exactly the same size and we didn't want to have to go in there and try and weld all that up, you know, solid like that. So we wanted a union. So what we've done so far, we cut about a foot piece of that tubing, that big long tubing we had. What it's going to end up looking like is the muffler is going to act as our union. The muffler is going to slide up on the old exhaust. That'll get clamped. Then Dad's going to put this piece in it, put the downpipe in it, the one that he's holding there. This downpipe is going to go onto the tubing, and then he is building a new hanger out of a big piece of stock that he has here. So he's getting that where it fits that uh, fits this diameter really well so that he can use that as the new hanger because the old one, of course, is nearly rotted off. So, I'm gonna do that and then we'll get all the, what the plan is, uh, since we can pull everything out, he's gonna pull the muffler off, put the, uh, the foot long piece of pipe in, put the turn down in, get that directed how he wants it, weld those two junctions up, and then he only has to put one clamp on, the one on the existing exhaust to the muffler, one clamp and that'll have everything else done. Got the muffler coming off the stock exhaust. Got one clamp here, that's welded up with the hanger right there. 
looks really good. If anything, this project was the perfect example of doing the right stuff to probably the wrong thing, but hey, it's going to work. It's going to do exactly what it needs to do to be an old farm truck. Dad's going to fire this thing up and see how it sounds. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button. It really is big, big help to us to be able to keep doing this and keep making these videos and make more and more of them, to be honest with you. Um, so definitely hit that subscribe button. Follow us on social media. This build has been going on on social media for a little while. By the time you guys have seen these videos, we will have had some little shorts and stuff and reels about this truck out there on social media for a while. So you can follow in a little bit more real time. We appreciate you guys. We look forward to hearing from you. Tell us what we did right and what we did wrong on this thing because uh, I'm sure there was plenty of both. So uh, thank you guys for joining and we'll see you next time.